Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Grassroots Racer. On today's episode, I'm interviewing someone who, if you've been looking at my social media recently, you'll be seeing a little few changes with the reels and what we've been posting. So Morgan Park, this um, lovely lady, Tia Watt, uh, who I will be speaking to today, she decided to give me a hand at Morgan Park with some of the media stuff. So she stood on the side of the track and filmed me as I went past, got some in pit lane footage. She did a heap for me. She actually made some reels for me. She did. She did a lot for me, so really appreciate that. But she does do some racing of her own. She likes to do time attacks in her spare time in her Subaru Impreza. So if you follow my page, I actually used to have one of them. Um, although it wasn't a WRX or wheel drive like hers is, mine was converted to rear wheel drive. But I also wanted to quickly mention how cool are these Formula RX-8 jerseys. Uh, as you can see, it's got Formula RX-8 written in the white and then Mazda written in the gold. It's really cool. It's also got... Um, Rotary written there, and the number one on the back. Uh, so the number one is what makes it unique uh, because it was for founding members who rocked up to the first race, did the first race meeting, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty special. And hopefully the category does release these out. Um, it'd be pretty cool to see people wearing it, but to, you know, sh to make it unique, uh, the number one will be for the founding members. But uh, I hope... You guys enjoy this episode of Grassy Tracer. It was very fun to speak to Tia. And um, yeah, enjoy this episode of Grassy Tracer. Remember, we still have the donation link. Um, all donations are really appreciated. We got a little bit more TV time over the weekend. Um, you know, we were a little bit forward this time compared to last couple of races. So yeah, it was good to be on the TV. But yeah, guys, remember, if you can't um, put a donation, that's fine. All we ask is you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, guys, and uh, enjoy this episode of Grassy Tracer. Tia, you're on the show tonight, and I just want to ask you, Tia, how did you first get involved in motorsport? Um, well, I've been around motorsport my whole life. Uh, my grandpa used to race sprint cars. Two of my uncles are in drag, and my dad does circuit racing. So I grew up around Queensland Raceway. I fell in love with my dad's GC8. Um, I didn't properly start getting into motorsport until about maybe three or four years ago when I first got my licence. Um, the first thing I ever did was skid pan with skid controls. So I took my Impreza on the skid pan. It's just so much fun. Uh, then I was super keen to jump on the circuit, but my dad wouldn't let me until I did a couple dirt days. So I took my daily out to the dirt track, did a couple dirt days until I got the hand of that. The hang of that, driving uh, on dirt and mastering car control. Uh, then in 2022, I think it was, I started in Time Attack. Um, so I first started driving my road car just so I could get the hang of the track, um, learning the lines, braking points and whatnot. Uh, then after, I'd say probably about half the season, I jumped into the race car, uh, which is a 99 Subaru WRX. Um, I've been racing there ever since. Last year, I came second in my class. I think this year, we've had two rounds so far. I think I'm still around third or four. Yeah. That's good. So... <laughs> Is the for the do you have sort of a championship structure and are all the rounds done at Queensland Raceway? Yeah, so we've got the Queensland Raceway series, which is just at QR. Um, there's also a Super Series, which is split up between QR and Northern Park. Um, so pretty much how it works is it's basically qualifying. It's not really door to door racing. Um, so we go out in groups based on lap time. So there's not a whole lot of overtaking. I'm just trying to put down the fastest time of the day. And then obviously, whoever has the fastest, second fastest, third fastest times are the points for the rounds. Um, we normally have about five or six rounds in a year. And yeah, most points wins. Yeah, so we have a, a similar thing in Victoria. Um, it used to be the Petters Sprint Series. I'm not sure what it is now. It might be just Winton Sprints. But you would go out in your respective groups. Um, you would do, I think four sessions, five sessions in a day, and then that add your your best because um, you start from the start-finish line, take off and race the person beside you. Um, mm -hmm. They would do your best first lap and then your your best flying lap and combine the lap time. Do they do a similar thing or um, is it just straight out the gate, set as many laps as you can and they take your best one? Yeah, for the state rounds in time attack, it is just they take your best. Uh, your best lap time um but a couple times a year we have special events like um next month we've got king of qr which is done over four layouts at queensland raceway um that one they take all your lap times over the four tracks add them together and then yeah, the lowest time wins overall 
Yeah, that's pretty good. And um, you were telling me earlier you have a WRX uh, Impreza. So I used to own a similar one. It wasn't a WRX, unfortunately. So <laughs> how do you find um, all-wheel drive and have you ever driven anything different? What did you sort of think of it? I love all-wheel drive. I've only ever driven all-wheel drive cars and I think I only ever will. Um, they're just incredible. They have so much grip. If you want them to slide, they can, but most of the time they don't, which is nice. So you can really send it around corners and not have to worry about it. No, I absolutely love all-wheel drive. But if you haven't driven all-wheel drive, you're missing out, essentially. <laughs> so, um, yeah, obviously you go to QR. What do you think of the track? Um, could you give someone some tips who might be going there in four weeks' time for a Super Series? <laughs> oh, I think I know someone who's going there in four weeks' time. Um <laughs> No, QRs, it's probably one of the more boring tracks, I would say. Um, it's I've only ever driven at QR in Morgan Park, so I don't have a whole lot of experience with other tracks. Um, but there are quite a few fast corners and then a lot of really slow ones. Um, so <laughs> the only tip I can really give is turn two is a bit difficult because it's a late turn in, which is a little bit weird. It took me quite a bit to get used to that. Um, it's super weird, but it's such a fun track, especially coming out of turn six and just nailing it down the straight. So much fun. Yeah, and it's only got six corners, so that's why you said um, it is a little bit of a boring track, but you've been to Morgan Park as well. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you sort of think of the track and how is it for we'll, – we'll talk about your media in a minute, but how do you sort of find it to drive on? Um, is it something – you know, where you compare it to Queensland Raceway? Because obviously you probably did QR first and then Morgan Park. And did you mm -hmm. take anything over from QR to help you learn Morgan Park? Yeah, definitely. Um, Morgan Park was so much fun. It's very technical track and very daunting, I would say. Just because QR is also a flat track. You're not going up and down hills. Where at Morgan Park, you've come out of turn one and two and you're up a hill and around under the bridge and you can't really see what's coming up. So that's a little bit terrifying. Um, the big right-hand sweeper at the back a little bit scary, but it's a lot of fun just nailing it through there. Um, I did find some of the corners were actually really similar. Um, coming out from under the bridge at Morgan Park around that hairpin is pretty much the exact same as turn six at QR. Um, and then the after the hairpin, you're coming up into the left. I can't remember what number of corners they are. They've driven there once. That's pretty similar to turn two, except you're going left instead of right. Now, Morgan Park was so much fun. Yeah, and um, obviously then you got to sit from the sidelines, was it last week? Yeah, it was last week already. Um, yeah. And what do you sort of think of the viewing points? Uh, do you like it? Um, you know, what what sort of points did you take away and did you catch anything exciting on the camera? Yeah, uh, Morgan Park, it's a bit of a pain because you can't see everything from pit lane. So you've got to drive around to go across the bridge. But from there, you can get some incredible shots of the cars coming under the bridge with the Morgan Park Raceway sign. Um, I think the only interesting thing I caught on camera was Mark Crutcher and T.O. Terry almost having a, his second chance for the year. That was a bit scary. <laughs> so I think someone had spun uh, just under the bridge and he's coming up over and the guys that rolled out in front of him, oh, here we go, <laughs> it's happening again. But he was fine. He didn't hit him. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about the work you did at Morgan Park? Um, who, who, you know, who you were working for, and um, what sort of stuff you do? What the services that you provide are um, for people who potentially will be going to QR? Um, are you also going to the Queen? What do they call it? It's a motor events race and they've got the XLs going and Chas Austin and everyone's going to be there? Um, no idea, but I'm sure I'll make an appearance. <laughs> so at Morgan Park, I normally I'm with TA2 uh, doing all their media, uh, but this weekend I was just freelancing. Um, so I was working with Hayden Jackson in TA2 and Liam Hall in the RX-8. Um, and obviously I met Ed and helped them out a little bit as well. Um, so basically I have a diploma in social media marketing, so I understand pretty much everything social media. Um, I've got my own camera and camera gear and everything as well. Um, so basically what I do over the weekend doing media, um, I provide complete photography and videography coverage. 
uh, completely run socials that includes posts, race reports, interviews, stories, reels, um, pretty much everything. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do anything media related, really. And um, as you, you probably saw, me and Liam are uh, uh, good friends and, you know, his his social media, uh, it's it's pretty dodgy, um, and uh, <laughs> you managed to make it look you managed to make it look half decent for him. So right. it was um it was good to see what you were able to do, and you did um same thing with mine. I, I can't doubt mum; she does an awesome job at mine. But um, you know, having the reels there, getting that outboard footage is something that um mum doesn't normally get. So it was a really awesome experience to have you there helping us out. Yeah, absolutely. It can be a bit difficult because you do need a media accreditation as well to get around the track. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm always happy to help. So if anyone around Queensland wants media, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. And um, is there potential in the future that you would want to expand a little bit and try and go to the other tracks in Australia and see how you do, um, you know, trying to, trying to do a bit of media work? Because so... I've got a, another question for you. Do you think you'll try and stick to just pure social media or do you think you'll expand out and try and help in other aspects of media? Um, like would you like to be a reporter one day? Would you like to film um, for the TV guys? You know, where, where are your goals at at the moment? I'm pretty happy just running social media, to be honest. Um, that's where my qualifications are. They sit within social media and that's what I love. I love the creative aspect. I'm not great at talking, so I don't think I'd go well as a reporter. <laughs> and I think just filming is a bit too boring for me. I like, you know, creating reels and uh, graphics and everything. But, yeah, no, I'd love to travel around the country as well, head to some other racetracks. Um, I've been to Sydney. I think that's the only um, interstate track that I've actually been to. What, what did you think of the track there? So I'm guessing you're talking about S&P. Yeah, yep. yeah. Oh, incredible, incredible track. Yeah. It makes QR look like a dog. <laughs> I love QR. But Sydney was just something else. Was racing under lights as well. Mm. Amazing. So you were there for round one, were you? I was, yeah. Oh, okay. So um, it was my first time at Sydney as well. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't expect the undulation. I, you know, you think Morgan Park's pretty bad, and then you look at Sydney. The From the pits, you can only sort of see the back section, um, one corner, yeah. and then... Up the top, you can only really see turn one. That is quite annoying about Sydney. You've got to go for a bit of a walk <laughs> to get a good spot, which sucks for filming. I saw me by the end of the weekend running back and forth around the track. Oh, dear. So were you doing work for Hayden as well there? I was with TA2, so I was oh, okay. with all the TA2 drivers pretty much. Yeah. So you would have seen Hayden had a bit of an up and down weekend. Uh, I think he lost an exhaust. Yeah. And Lost a gearbox. Oh, he so. lost an exhaust quite a few times, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got a few videos of it dragging on the floor. Yeah, it was a bit unfortunate for Mr. Jackson, but he'll get over it. Yeah. Well, he, he, seemed, to, <laughs> he seemed to do a bit better at uh, Morgan Park. He get a, got a podium finish, so that's pretty good. He did, yeah. You know, obviously, you're, you know, with your time attacks, do you ever see yourself doing more in motorsport or – do you, in, well, on the racing side of things, or do you, you know, like to do the time attacks and just want to keep doing that? Yeah, realistically, I'd keep racing a hobby and then focus on media for work. Um, as much as I'd love to drive as a career, I don't think it'll be a good fit for me. I like just doing it for fun and there's no stress and no pressure. Where media can get a little bit stressful, but it's still fun and I love it. So I really want to keep the hobby and the work separate. Yeah. And, you know, what are some of the unique challenges that you probably face um, that a lot of people don't see, uh, you know, sort of more behind the scenes stuff that you sort of challenge, I guess, you face? Yeah. Yeah. So I think everyone can agree that money is a huge factor in racing. And I think that's everyone's issue. So that's kind of boring because everyone has <laughs> the same thing. Um, I think uniquely just being a female in motorsport is a little bit difficult um honestly i think now is a great time to be a female in motorsport because there is such a push for it but since i got into motorsport so late because i was terrified i think i was 17 when i first started racing and i, I didn't go into karting or anything when i was younger because i was scared of the guys and i would be the only girl there 
Um, in Time Attack, I am the only girl in this series, but I don't mind now because all these these guys that I've raced with are just amazing. Um, they're all mates with my dad, and they treat me like their daughter, and they're so supportive and lovely. Um, but it can be a little bit of a challenge just being female, surrounded by all these <laughs> crazy guys. But it is a lot of fun. Yeah, because um, I- I'm guessing when you're on the track, like eventually you have people who are a bit quicker than you. So I'm assuming everyone leaves you a bit of room. And and I'm not just saying for you. I'm guessing the whole series would be clean. Um, and and look, I've raced against many women in motorsport, and I tell you what. You know, it's not like women are slow. They are very quick. Um, I used to race with this girl called Ruby, and she would always give me a run for my money in go-karting. Um, mm-hmm. And even now there's a girl that we know, uh, Joanne. She's over in Europe with the Ferrari Academy. So, you know, the Australi- Australians are rising um, in motorsport as well, and it's good to see a few women, um, you know, like Joanne, who are going overseas and representing Australia well. Yeah, absolutely. It's really great to see that Formula One Academy is kind of blowing up as well. It's really, really good to see. There's such a push for women in motorsport. And if there's only one thing you can take away from this is if you're a chick watching this, get into racing. Just do it. Because there are so many girls that are starting to get into it, so you're not going to be the only one there. Hmm. Um, I even, I've interviewed, um, yeah, I've actually interviewed quite a few um, ladies on the podcast. I think my latest one was Imogen Radburn. She races in Formula Ford um, at mm-hmm. the moment. So, yeah, definitely it's good to see the numbers are rising. Um, at our local car club here, I think we've – they've got a big – how many is it? I think it's nearly 10, like, entries per round, so they have a good championship for the ladies category, and it's it's really mm-hmm. good to see. Yeah, definitely. So, obviously, you want to try and um, do as many rounds as a Super Series this year. How do you Mm -hmm. go about putting a budget together and how do you go about planning trying to get to all the rounds? Are you going to try and go to all the Super Series rounds if you can? If I can, uh, that would be nice. But I normally just stick to the Queensland uh, Raceway rounds just because it's closer to home and it does get a bit expensive going to Morgan Park as well as Queensland Raceway. Um, honestly, I don't think we really have a budget. I'm pretty lucky because the car I drive is my dad's car as well, which he also races. So he takes a lot of the expenses like fuel, tyres, brakes, servicing and whatnot. I pretty much just pay for my membership, my licence, uh, the round fees and then the the upkeep for QR, which they just added this year. It's <laughs> so rude. Um, and now we're pretty lucky um we always tow our car out there ourselves so we don't have too many expenses as compared to some other categories no it, it, we're pretty good yeah i think we already talked about this but um are you sort of from like the ipswich area so you're kind of in between morgan park and qr or are you a little bit further uh, out yeah i'm further out i'm in brisbane bayside so oh. an hour from qr and then like two and a half from morgan park oh fair enough I'm yeah, sure. not too close. <laughs> yeah. I remember the drive from um because we landed in Brisbane Airport and the, the drive out to Morgan Park. Going up a mountain on the way there and then going back down on the way back. <laughs> it's wild, eh? So random. Quite a nice drive though. But um yeah, no, good scenery, um, when it wasn't dark and we couldn't see anything. Mm. Um <laughs> I think when we took Cameron back, you know was a bit of a fun drive. I think we had a few things go happen along the way, but yeah, oh, look, yeah. it was yeah, it was just Queensland traffic, so I don't know what you can do. I think I think Mum missed a turn off at some point, and then we just got stuck in like peak hour traffic. So oh no, oh. go through the city's worse. Did you go through the city? Where'd you go? I'm not 100 percent sure, but I know we went through Ipswich because um, I think that was sort of the we just followed Google Maps. We got no idea. So we just went through yeah. switch. And then I think there was a, a toll road that, cause when we go traveling for racing, we don't really mind taking the toll road, but, um, so much faster. Yeah. But I think <laughs> that's the one mum missed. And then we ended up just being in the everyday traffic. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, we I'll got to the rental. Early, then. Yeah. We got to the rental car place <laughs> and, uh, all, all in good time. We had heaps. So, but um, I think 
I think it was um, we left it. I think we left at five a.m. on the dot. So it was a bit of an early start for us, um, all the way from Warwick. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we where did where were you sort of were you staying in Warwick as well when you're in Morgan Park or did you go home every day? I stayed yeah stayed in Warwick. I can imagine driving two and a half hours each way. That would be horrible. Fair enough. And you were there for the three days? Yeah. Yeah, I stayed from Thursday night till Sunday night. left Monday morning. Oh, same as ever. Oh, actually, no. I think most people left Sunday night. For some reason, I stayed. (laughs) Well, it's um, when you're sort of nearby, I can see leaving Sunday night and like people like Liam, he had a fifteen-hour trip back home, so would have been fun for him. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't have to do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I was talking to him, and he's like, he's like, oh, I've had enough of this. <laughs> I'm not way back. Like, he was just, he was not happy. He had a bad weekend, so a bit unfortunate. Yeah, but he did. It, it is what it is. Um, That's racing. Some weekends suck. Some are great. <laughs> Talking about um, sort of racing and bad weekends, have you ever have you ever had like a, a pretty funny story that you know you want to share that's happened in the Subaru? Um, well, I wouldn't find it funny because it sucks, but it being a Subaru, it'll break and it does break quite frequently. Um, I had one time. It was the start of last year. It was one of our big events. Um, it was like Asian versus Euro days, so the Asian cars versus the European cars. Um, my dad and I were both driving that day. Um, I think, I don't know, that was a different time. Anyway, his dad's going out for his first session and he comes back in. He's like, oh, just watch the brakes. They're feeling a bit spongy. I'm like, oh, fantastic. So I went out. I'm like, yeah, they do feel a bit whack. Um, but we kept, we were fine. It was nothing to be concerned about yet. Uh, then Dad's gone out for his second session. He's come down, coming down the straight into turn six, and I was watching him. I'm like, oh, this is a late break. He's like, that's a bit ballsy. Uh, it turns out <laughs> his brake pedal's gone to the floor. Uh, oh, he had no right. brake, so he sent it. After sending you this photo, I've actually got photos of it. Yeah, his brakes failed going 180 into turn six, and he sent it into the gravel, full Doc Hudson spec sliding. It was pretty epic, actually, to watch. <laughs> Yeah, he's come back into the pits uh, and there's rocks everywhere. And we called our mechanics. He's only like 20 minutes down the road. So he's come, bled the brakes. And we thought, yep, we'll get back out there. So we've gone out again and then the brakes failed again going to turn one. And that was the end of the weekend. So I got a total of one session in for the weekend, which was fantastic. And that was it. That was at QR? It was at QR. So how's the runoff at turn one? Have you got at least, did he have a gravel jump slow him down or did he? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So there's gravel at turn six, turn one, and then if you're on the national at turn three, so you're not going anywhere near the wall. Like you'll stop pretty pretty soon. Uh, unless it's in the wet. Yeah, unless it's in the wet and you hit the grass and then hit the tyres. That is a funny story as well. Do you, <laughs> you, you want to share that one? I'll share that one. Um, so for our class of rules, um, we run semi slick tires, and again, going back to the budget thing, we can't, we don't have the budget to have multiple sets of tires, so we only have semi slicks. Um, I've never driven our car in the wet before because of that, and it's very, very difficult to get it to turn. Um, even though it's all drive, it's still, it's still pretty hard. Um, so last round, when was it? What was month we in? I think it was the end of last month or start of last month or something. Went out for round two. Um, it was pissing down the whole day. Um, and my dad didn't want to go. He wanted to turn around before we even got to QR. But I was very adamant about having a drive because I wanted my points to the championship. Um, so I had – it was a pretty cautious morning. Um, I was taking it pretty easy. I kept it on the track. Um, until the end of the day, I was starting to get a little bit cocky. Um, going into turn two, I think I kept the throttle decently flat, which – Honestly, I really shouldn't have done. Uh, next thing I know, back stepped out and I'm kind of spinning and I hit the grass and the car just speeds up. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Um, I tried to catch it at first, but once I hit the grass, like, there was no saving it. 
<laughs> so I'm trying to look for the tire wall and I couldn't see it until I hit it head on. <laughs> so I had my first shunt at QR of all places. Yeah. Look at me go. Oh, the car was fine though. It's only got a couple dents, um, bent split amount, but that's pretty much it. It held up really well. Yeah, no, that's good then. If it, uh, you walked away from it, but um, yeah. Um, look, honestly, you, I, I reckon you did all right because, well, I've always been lucky that Dad sort of like threw me in the deep end from the start. He's like, all right, if you're gonna be race car driver, you gotta learn how to drive in the wet. So I always mm-hmm. did slicks in the wet. Um, and in go karting, when you go off, it's not too bad. Um, they're just sliding off into the gravel, and because the gravel traps are the size as they are on race tracks, you don't hit mm-hmm. walls. So I learnt the hard way. Um, then the one that the one that pained me when he turned around one day at the cl- like we have a club meeting and he goes, "Give give the new kid your wet tires. You'll you'll race on slicks today." And um, oh, no. I still finished fourth out of ten, but uh, it was a club meeting, so it's not like it's got real good cred. No so, bragging rights. Yeah, no bragging rights in that one. But I was I was only a couple seconds off the leader, so I was I was happy with it personally. Um, mm-hmm. And and I was I was angry that my wet tires got given away. So, so disrespectful. I know. <laughs> but, Maybe um, if I did that, I wouldn't have hit the tire wall. But it is what it is. I'm not used to the rain. Well, look, even when we had our wet race at Morgan Park, I tell you what, those semi slicks weren't very nice. No, I'm definitely not. I was watching um your race. I was filming, and I think almost everyone came off. Yeah, I went off as takers. well. <laughs> I didn't see that. Well, you know, at the back, the long right hand sweeper, it, w- mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't a bad off, but I couldn't see because of the fog, and I was just turning, and I went straight off, and then I found my way back on pretty quickly. But yeah, it, oh, it, it wasn't very nice. No, it can be a bit scary, especially a track like Morgan Park. QR is not scary. <laughs> you can see everything that's coming up. Hmm. Well, I'm not I'm not sure how you went at um Q oh, Morgan Park. But I felt like every time I go into a hairpin and breaking late, that the wheels were just about to lock up, like, every single time. Well, I think that's just a real drive thing. Oh, fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Must be. Maybe it's the driver. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, is there anyone you'd like to thank for supporting you along the way so far in your motorsport journey? And... Um, do you want to give your social media a plug so people can check it out and see what you're all about? Yeah, give us a uh, follow on socials. I pretty much only use Instagram and TikTok. It's Tia Watt on the screen with your lovely editing. Um, the only person I can really shout out is my dad. He's the one who got me into motorsport. He's given me the car and given me the opportunity to get into time attacks. So I couldn't thank him enough. It's, it's my whole life, essentially. Fair enough. He's um he's obviously done quite a bit for you, so that's pretty good. Yeah. But um yeah, thanks for jumping on tonight, Tia. I really appreciate it. Of course. Um, you're like, I think. Hold on. Yeah, you probably you you probably rank after Hayden and Liam. I had both of them on. <laughs> so after, what do you mean? <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> no, nah, Liam's was funny because he had to stop it every five minutes because his mate was sit- his mate oh. Greg was sitting next to him in his house. He was his housemate for a while. He was just pissing himself mm-hmm. laughing the whole time, and then we had to stop it multiple times. <laughs> but um, oh dear, I'm surprised I got the words out, kind of. Fair enough. But, uh, yeah, thanks for jumping on, and I really appreciate it. Of course.